If you're planting new herbs in containers this year, then you may be wondering how many of those herbs can you fit in a pot? Are there any herbs that pair well together and any ones that need to stay separate? And is there anything else that you don't know that you don't know that you need to consider before planting? Today I'm planting six new herbs in two separate pots and I'm going to show you the thought process I'm going with to consider which ones I'm going to pair together and why certain ones are not going to be planted together. So hopefully by the end of this video you'll get an idea of what questions you need to ask based on the herbs that you are planning to plant this year. So first of all, let me share with you the ones that I'm planting today. Some of these I have never grown before and some I have, so I have a little bit of experience. This one in particular is a new one to me. This is Stevia. I've actually never grown Stevia, even though I use it daily in my coffee. I would love to actually be able to produce it on my own. I'm super excited about this one. Next, I have a lemon thyme. I have grown thyme for many, many years, but I love the fragrance of this lemon. It just gives a little bit of a different touch and I'm looking forward to smelling it and also using it in my cooking. I also have lemon balm. Lemon balm is something that I have grown in the past and last year the plant that I had just ended up not growing very well so I wanted to start over this year. So I got a new healthy plant and I'll share with you some things I've learned in the past that I'm gonna do a little bit different this year. Next I have parsley. Parsley is one that I grow every single year. I absolutely love it. I dry enough parsley to be able to last our family all year in the spice cabinet. And it's one that I typically start each season to be able to get a new set of plants each year. Next I have creeping thyme. I've never grown creeping thyme, but I've seen it and it's beautiful. So this will be more probably for ornamental value than anything, but because it's a thyme, it still smells great and could be used in cooking if I want to, but mostly this is gonna be a filler ornamental plant for me. And next I have sweet marjoram. Marjoram actually is very similar to oregano, but they grow differently. I've never grown this before, so I had to do some research on it, but I'm really excited about growing this in my garden. I plan on using it in a homemade Italian seasoning recipe that I can use whenever I wanna use Italian seasoning, but also I make my own pizza sauce, which requires Italian seasoning. And so I figured this would be just one more ingredient that I don't have to buy at the grocery store. So this one, like I said, is gonna have a little bit different habit than oregano, but there are some similarities. So I'll explain that to you in just a minute. You may know that most of the plants that I grow, I actually grow in raised beds and in the ground, but I prefer to grow herbs in containers for lots of different reasons. I like that I can keep them contained. I like that I can keep them right outside my patio so I can just walk a few steps if I need to use them in the kitchen. But they do require a little bit of extra planning when it comes to the planting part. And then for the most part, once you get them planted, they're pretty easy to maintain. But some of them do have different growth habits and that that's what we need to keep in mind when we're trying to decide where we're going to plant these herbs and how close they can be to other herbs. The first question you want to ask when you're planting new plantings of herbs is, is this herb an annual, a perennial, or a biennial? Now just a quick recap of what these mean if you're not familiar. An annual herb is any herb that is going to grow and die in the same growing season. Now, examples of annual herbs are gonna be cilantro, basil, and dill. Those will grow that one year and they'll die off. But depending on your zone, you may have perennial herbs, ones that would normally grow year after year after year, but they won't survive your winter. And because they won't survive your winter, you're gonna treat them as annual herbs because they're only going to grow one season. That brings me to true perennial herbs that actually will survive your winter. These are going to grow year after year. And because of that, you're gonna to have to make a little bit of extra accommodation for them because of the way that they grow. Some can be overly aggressive, some can be invasive, some can be a little bit harmful for any other herbs that you might plant with them. So you need to be really careful with some of those. And so if you have an herb that's actually gonna last your winter, you're gonna to have to take a little bit of extra care on where you choose to plant it. And then we have your biennial herbs, and there aren't that many of those. Parsley is the only one that I'm planting today. A biennial herb spends its first season growing 
just like you would any other herb you harvest from it and then in a lot of zones at least in my zone with parsley it will last the winter but then the next spring it starts to produce a seed you may think that this is bolting it's actually not it's what the what the crop is supposed to do it produces leaves the first year and then it starts to produce a flower stalk and set seed the second year if you have the room let your parsley do that because it's an amazing pollinator magnet but because it's a biennial, it'll be treated a little bit differently. If you don't wanna let it go to seed the next season, you can always just take it out at the end of the year. But because the biennial has different growth habits than your annuals and your perennials, I wanted to make sure that you knew that there was this category as well. As I'm looking at these herbs that I'm planting today, the perennial herbs that I have are gonna be my lemon balm. Lemon balm in my zone 7B climate will last all winter and it will last year after year in most conditions. The thyme is going to last my winter. Like I said, I've had thyme that I've had growing for years and years. Now over the years, the thyme will start to get woody, so you might want to replace it every few years, but it will technically survive the winter. Now we've got marjoram and the stevia here, and technically these are perennial herbs, but from my research, Again, I haven't ever grown these before, but from my research, I do not believe they'll survive my winter in my zone 7B. So I will be treating these as annual plants and knowing that I will be growing them and harvesting them all this year. The next thing I want to ask and research potentially is the water needs of these particular herbs. For the most part, herbs are not fussy. However, if you do get herbs in the mint family, they can require more water than herbs that are not in the mint family. You can look up this information online, but just as a quick rundown of what I've learned is that anything in the mint family like peppermint, marjoram, oregano, lemon balm, those are the herbs that are gonna be requiring a little bit more water. So I've learned that if I'm planting them together, I really do want to plant them in the same pot just because I'll be watering that pot more often. If I pair an herb like thyme that doesn't require as much water with an herb that requires a lot of water, I've noticed that sometimes the, the herb that likes it a little bit more dry tends to suffer if you overwater it. And then if you make the thyme happy, then the mint family herbs are gonna need a little bit more water than, than you give them. So that's why I like to pair crops that have similar water needs in the same pot. Again, for the most part, I just focus on mint family and not mint family because I found that the rest of them are actually pretty adaptable. Like the parsley, I really haven't had any trouble keeping it watered one way or the other, so it's a pretty adaptable herb. With these things in mind, knowing which of these herbs are annual, perennial, and biennial, and also taking into consideration the different water needs of these herbs, this is the combination that I'm going to be using for these six today. Lemon balm is one that I know is going to last year after year. And being in the mint family, it can spread. Now I haven't found it to be as invasive as mint and oregano that will take over an entire pot. But if I have a healthier plant, it might very well do that. I've just not had that experience personally. However, I have had people tell me that their lemon balm did take over. So it's gonna be in a pot where if it does take over, in the years in the future, it's gonna be okay. So it's actually gonna work out well to pair the lemon balm with the stevia and the marjoram because as I mentioned in my climate, the marjoram and the stevia will likely not make it through the winter. That way this younger sort of, this is kind of a big, big pot, but this younger lemon balm plant will be able to grow hopefully pretty happily with these two herbs for this season. And then if it wants to take over the container in the following years, that'll be okay because these will be out anyway. So I'm going to pair these together for that reason. And that leaves us with the two kinds of thyme and the parsley. 
and none of these are going to be extremely vigorous spreaders. Now the time will over the years, but in the first year it's really not going to be that bad. And so I think it's going to pair actually very nicely with the parsley, which will tend to grow a little bit up. And so will the thyme. Their growth habits more up, but just a little bit spreading for this time. And then the creeping thyme will be a nice little ground cover and maybe to kind of like spilling over the planter. So I'm going to plant these in the smaller planter because they're just not going to need as much room as these larger ones in the mint family. They do tend to grow, as you can see, quite a bit bigger. So I'm going to put these in my larger planter here. One last thing you may be wondering, and that is, let's see if you buy a transplant and most of the transplants will tell you about how much space to give them. And this time in particular says, give it 12 inches of space. Well, I've got a pot here that I would estimate, I'm really bad at estimating, but I don't know, maybe 18 inches or so. I honestly don't take into consideration these spacing recommendations all that seriously with with planters just because the growth habit is a little bit different. It's not like your annual vegetable garden where they really need a lot of space. Um, as long as you get the water needs right and you're not crowding them too much, you can always prune these back. If, especially if they're not bigger sp spreaders like your um, mint family plants, like oregano and that kind of thing, you can always prune these back without any problem. They're not going to just overtake a pot, at least in my experience like your, your peppermint and your oregano and some of the other ones. So I don't really worry too much about the official plant spacing. If they fill it up, the good thing is, is that herbs are actually very resilient and you can replant them. I've replanted from different containers, lots of my different herbs and they've done really well. So where you put them in the pot isn't like you're signing your life away on making sure that these herbs are in these pots you'll be able to adjust it in the future if you want to. And that's true with oregano and mint. I don't know how many times I've actually transplanted my oregano and mint too. So just know that if you make a mistake or you learn that, okay, this isn't growing well in this area, then you can always change it with herbs. They're very adaptable. So now let's get to planting. Just like I do in my raised beds, I like to fill the bottom of a brand new pot with herbs. Um, I like to fill it with just soil that I've used in the past that might be not the greatest. So these actually came from flower pots and you've got plenty of soil, but it's not, it's not fresh soil. I want to leave the fresh soil for the very top, but this can be a good filler on the bottom. I did that with that one as well. Now that I have the bottoms filled, I'm going to fill the rest of this with a high quality potting soil. This that I'm using today is Fox Farm, which I really like. It has some organic matter, some worm castings, and some different things that'll add a little bit of nutrition. Herbs don't typically need a lot of nutrition. They're not as, as demanding as your annual, annual vegetables. So I think this will actually work out really well for these planters. The first thing I'm going to do is just situate where I think I want the herbs to go. The lemon balm in particular doesn't grow very tall, so I'm going to put it toward the front of the pot. It'll be the one that's going to be more uh, toward the front and will be lower. The other two you can already tell grow pretty tall, the stevia right here and the marjoram right here. Now what I may do is just double check these plant tags. Height 12 to 24 inches on the marjoram, the stevia height 18 to 30 inches. So the stevia is going to be taller. I'm going to put it on this side because this is the north side. And then I'm going to put the marjoram here, which is on the south side. That way the stevia can get plenty of, uh, plenty of sun. So now that we've got that,
Now I know the soil will settle a little bit. I'm gonna place this soil level near the top and I'll add some potting soil later if I need to, but I'm gonna go ahead and have that kind of come in over the edge. These are plenty moist. I just watered them yesterday and they still have plenty of moisture. If the root ball had been dry, I would have watered them first. All right, then I'm gonna get some other potting soil and I will top this one off. I can smell the lemon balm as I'm working with it. All right, so I fit quite a bit into this one container and I'll keep an eye on it. Obviously this one will need to be watered a lot um, just because all of these plants love to have water, but that way when I water it, they'll all be able to access it. If I find that any of them are suffering because they're too close together, I can always move it. But for now, I'm gonna put these all in the same place. And there is a couple, there are a couple of little areas that I probably could add a little bit of a fun touch. This area in particular, I think I'm gonna add a little alyssum plant because the alyssum flowers attract a lot of beneficial insects. It doesn't require a whole lot out of the pot and um, it would be really pretty just kind of cascading on the side. So I think I'm gonna go get a little alyssum flower to add in here. Here we go. All right, this pot's done. Let's go to the next one. Again, I'm just gonna double check the height. This one, six to 12 inches. Of course, the creeping time is going to flow over. This one, 12 inches. So let's go ahead and do the parsley on this side and we'll do the regular thyme on this side. Yikes. This is very, very root bound. I'm glad I'm planting these now. All right, I have planted these six herbs in these two planters, and the only thing left to do is to water them in and watch them grow and then harvest them as needed. Truly growing herbs outside your patio can be one of the most rewarding and cost-effective things that you can do. For more beginner level tips for growing your own garden, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more or listen to these podcast episodes where I talk about growing herbs in more depth.